Are German automakers waving a white flag in the tariff wars? Germany's largest automaker, Mercedes-Benz, along with BMW and Volkswagen, support scrapping the European Union U.S. auto tariffs altogether to zero percent. This drastic measure, something the European Union would need to officially sign off on, and that may not be so easy after the European Commission announced we're going ahead on Friday with retaliatory measures in reaction to the U.S. steel and aluminum tariffs. What are they going to target? Everything from corn to cosmetics to metals. Joining us now, a CEO whose companies largely depend on steel and aluminum producing industrial robots, heavy machinery, intricate parts and controls used all over the globe. We welcome Resilience Capital Partners CEO Steve Rosen in a Fox Business exclusive all the way from Cleveland, right. the heartland. This is the voice we wanted to hear because there are so many loud voices in D.C. and overseas. We need to hear from you guys how you see this tariff war right now, especially somebody like you who uses a lot of metal. Well, there's so much noise. You have to really know what not to listen to. There's, there's just too much, right? And what, I, what I've noticed is there's a lot of crying and no one's been hurt yet. So just... Oh, it sounds like my kids. Yeah, it's like my kids. And, and I say that <laughs> right. to them. Uh, you, you know, don't cry until you're hurt. And, you know, this is... And, and no one's getting off. This is a moving car, right? So no one's jumping off. You're going to get hurt if a car is moving. And, and so we've got big trade agreements. NAFTA, that's a big deal. That's a one... Point two trillion dollar issue. Mm -hmm. You're talking about in Europe a three billion dollar tariff potentially on a one trillion dollar trade. So you're yeah. saying so it's, look it's, at NAFTA. It, just Don't. keep it in perspective. Okay, let's talk about NAFTA for a second. Sure. Your company, if we do, if this drags on and we don't get a deal to modernize NAFTA in the way President Trump would like to see and the way the Canadians and, and the Mexicans could be comfortable with, when will that start to hurt a company like you? Well, let me start with, I think we will get a deal. And there's, a, there's quite a few smart people working towards making a, a deal here. Mm -hmm. This has gone on for almost a year now. NAFTA, it's, a lot's happened in 25 years, right? It started with Reagan. And, and you know, Reagan's, you know, thinking in my, you know, I, I, I thought about it. And, you know, we don't want something south of our border where there's real issues. Right. Ill, 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 illegitimate businesses. Mm -hmm. Right. Drugs and crime. That's south of our border. That was a Reagan, I think, thought. Fast forward 25 years. A lot's happened. And, you know, it needs to be redrafted. And, and my sense is, you know, Wilbur Ross is a very smart guy. He's not really a politician who just takes photographs at facilities and you know, moves on to the next facility for a photo op. Steve Mnuchin is a really smart guy. And they'll find a solution, and, I, and, and my sense is it'll work well. Tell me what you think about this application for waivers. 21,000 companies in the U.S. are trying to get exemption, claiming that they are crying because they're already hurt, uh, as you put it. Uh, doesn't that kind of deaden or lessen the impact of tariffs? And if the, the Commerce Department, now would be Wilbur Ross, starts granting these things right and left, um, you know, how solid could, could the stance the U.S. is trying to make when it comes to fair and level trade, level tra playing fields, uh, really be? Well, it, it, it not only needs to be very surgical. This waiver is, well, you, you had a, someone on your show, uh, former undersecretary, a few days ago, and you brought up Sun Power. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we have a company in Youngstown, Ohio, and they are a uh, role former for uh, metal products. One of their main customer, uh, customer industries and markets is the solar industry. They make racking. And Sun Power was a big customer, right? And they've actually applied for a waiver. Because and, he said, right now, they're crying because they have been hurt to, to the tune of $2 million a week that they have to pay in metal tariffs. Yeah. Well, I don't want to make Chinese this about, I don't want to make rather. this about Sun Power. Right. But, you know, Heinz Industries is, uh, you know, it's, it's not a big business. And Sun Power was a $10 million customer until they went to China. So, you know, it, there's, you got to really I see. So be they careful. They were buying from your They friends. were buying from our a company we had an investment in. We still do. And, and there's good people there. They've been there 35 years. But, and so but Steve, is this about good people? Issue. We know these are good people. But if you're really looking at capitalism mm -hmm. and you're looking at a way to pro, uh, uh, prosper and you're looking at companies, should the companies not be allowed, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, to source from the least expensive players in the game. 
Well, I'm glad you brought that up because that's it, it, you're right. Mm -hmm. So when I said a lot's happened in 25 years, a lot has happened in 25 years, right? Uh, much of the lower, most commoditized parts of manufacturing, if you want to talk about manufacturing, mm -hmm. has moved into those, you know, those call it emerging markets, right. if you will. So we're mostly a service economy now, right? So and service economies are less dependent on manufacturing. But when I say that, you know, um, you know these tariffs. It does make sense because we want to not only, and I hope Trump's successful with China. I really do. Okay. Uh, innovation and protecting your IP is critically important. Absolutely. So, so your future is not necessarily in just manufacturing, being efficient at that. Your future is innovation, technology. Every business is a tech business today. Good to and, see. And, and he's got to be really, uh, he's got to be, he's got to be sharp about how he does this. Well, keep us posted. Hope you don't feel the pain. <laughs> <laughs> We're watching this very, very closely for all of our states in the country. Thank you so much, Steve. Thanks for having me. Uh, Stephen Rosen of Resilience Capital.